when it comes to coaching, what do you believe in? Now, if we were playing Family Feud, I think of it, like, what would the top four answers on the board be? And the first one that I, that I think of is what I believe should be taught. And that to me is a question of technique. Uh, where do I want your elbow to start when you're hitting? Where, what do I want your feet to do on your approach? Another thing that I think is in my top four is how I believe the game should be played. And this to me is a question of tactics. Do, are we going to run a 6-2? Are we going to run a 5-1? Are we going to play perimeter, uh, perimeter or rotation defense? Another one of my top four is how I believe skills should be taught. This is a question to me of methodology. Am I going to teach whole part whole? Am I going to use random practice versus block practice? Questions like that. And then the last of those four, I think, is what characteristics I believe that athletes or humans in a larger sense, uh, usually other people, should possess? This is a question to me of values. This is thinking of things like competitiveness and character. This to me is the topic uh, that covers the culture that we want to build with our teams. So you'll notice that these questions that I think are most commonly asked are all what and how questions. And as I said, I believe that there are two halves of our coaching philosophy. And so whether we realize it or not, those what and how questions are external factors. They're things that happen outside of us. And I think that we overlook the fact that those questions that we're so keen on answering overlook these inner beliefs that shape the outer beliefs, that the questions of who and why are shaping the what and the hows that we believe in. And so for the sake of comparison, D.H. Lawrence said, the map appears to us more real than the land. What I'm thinking about here is that the land is the environment in which we find ourselves, the team that we have, the place that we're in, both physically and emotionally and mentally, that that is where we actually are, where we actually work from. But I think that oftentimes we're working from a map. We're working from a practice plan. We're working from a set of drills and games that we want to accomplish because we think that those are the things that are going to help us get better at the game. And so I want us to think about the comparisons between the maps that we're looking at and the land that we are actually on. So how do we go about evaluating this land in which we find ourselves? Well, I talked about who and why. And one of, the, one of the very popular questions right now, I think, or statements is this know your why. And if you Google that statement, you're gonna come up with posts from places like Forbes and Huffington Post, uh, from motivational speakers like Simon Sinek and John Gordon. And when I look at those things, I think that know your why to them means have a purpose. And while I think that having a purpose is definitely important, I think that there's more to this why. To me, the why also encompasses our foundation, the place from which we work. And so I think that foundation and purpose are certainly related, but I do not think that one supplants the other. And so if we're gonna talk about whys, I wanna share with you my why. And I want to share with you how did I begin to formulate that why. And that's rooted in what, it, what do I believe about me? And so I want, I want to encourage you to think about what of this resonates with you and what doesn't. As Matsuo Basho said, do not seek to follow in the footsteps of the wise. Seek what they sought. So rather than take any ideas of mine that you may like, I encourage you to think about what is it about those ideas that you like? Why are they important to you? Because I'm gonna tell you why I think that they're important to me. And how I go about that is thinking about 
what matters to me and why is it worth caring about? Why is it worth the energy that I put into it? In the language of our founding fathers, I wanna think about why do I hold these truths that I'm holding up to be self-evident? Why are they so obvious and clear and important to me? And I also wanna think about what kind of verbs make up my why? So, for me, one way of formulating my why is to say, I want to inspire coaches to become mindful, purposeful, and proactive in their coaching and help them create and develop the tools to do so. And here are the verbs that are in my why then. Inspire, become, help, create, develop. These, these words mean a lot to me. These resonate strongly with me. What, it is, what it's saying to me is that I believe that the power and the potential lies in the people that I work with. It's not something that I give to them. It's something that I help them dig out of themselves, something that I help, I help them discover within themselves. Now, that's a really nice statement. And I want, I want people to recognize that that statement didn't just appear from the ether as it is. I, I didn't just write this up out of nowhere. It's a, it's a product of a great deal of study, a great deal of introspection. And for me, one of the things that drove that introspection is this from Bob Dylan. He said, the highest purpose of art is to inspire. What else can you do? What else can you do for anyone but inspire them? In my career as a coach, at some point, coaching a sport became less important to me than coaching a person. Sport gave me the chance to coach a person, and I wanted that person to be able to see in themselves a little bit of what I saw in them. So I'd like you to think for a moment about the role of inspiration in your coaching. How important is inspiration for you? Does it play a similar role as it does for me? What does inspiration look like for you? 